Pull it forward, just pull it straight ahead. Get ready to jump on. Got the wind in our favor. If I go through that brush, we're gonna make all kinds of racket. Hope we're gonna put him right on that slough right below us. 15 yards from camp, and we'll walk right up the trail right here and stop. And uh, must have caught the human scent, but pretty cool to know a wolf walked into camp last night. There are people in this world that go looking for adventure, and then there are those that live it every day. Alaska Outdoors Television. Experience Alaska like never before. It's late September. It's cold, it's cloudy, it's, there's no wind blowing. We flew in last night. I saw a big bull about one o'clock. We're set up, we, we did some calling last night. I like to call late at night, try to get them to pull in, and then we're calling this morning. And we've got, still got more gear to pack, and we'll get some calling in, we'll do some glass, and we'll eat breakfast, and then uh, we'll pack the rest of our gear in, and then, then we'll do some more calling. Nothing better than a fresh cup of coffee by the campfire. Starbucks French roast. Gotta have it. You know, this is a country where you, you glass and you glass and you glass and you call and call, you know. And sooner or later, everything works out. Oh. Alaska moose, the biggest in the nation. These giants of the wilderness are a favorite among Alaskans and non-residents alike, sporting monster-sized antlers and yielding enough meat to feed a family through the winter. Moose are the largest of all deer species and have distinctive features that differ from other deer, such as their tall legs, long face, and a muzzle that dangles over their chin. A flap of skin known as the bell sways beneath their throat. The largest moose in Alaska are found here in the western part of the state. In fact, the largest Alaska moose recorded in history was taken in the western Yukon in 1897, weighing 1,800 pounds and standing 7 feet 10 inches tall at the shoulders. It's mid-September, the middle of rutting season, when the bull moose are looking to mate. During the rut, bulls are known to become very aggressive and prone to attacking when startled, and are known to do battle with each other for mating supremacy and territorial rights. It's that time of year and it's on, baby, so there's no better place to be if you're a moose hunter than in the middle of moose country, in the middle of the rut. And here we are, baby, we are ready. And uh, tell you what, I can't wait to hear that big boy come rolling in. Oh. Oh, oh. Man, if that don't get you pumping, nothing will. Rutting season is also the time of year when the snow starts falling and the moose come down off the mountains to graze on willow, birch, and aspen twigs, their main source of winter nutrition. To get a bird's eye view of the area and see where these moose are hanging out, the hunters first need to gain elevation. several ways to call a bull moose. The long bellow is the sound of a cow in heat, which is ultimately the bull's main priority. The short grunts mimic a bull in rut, which oftentimes draws other bulls into do battle over territory. And scraping the moose call up and down a tree or shrub replicates the sound of a moose raking its antlers. While the guys continue scouting the surrounding area, it's time to catch some fresh dinner. Tonight's main course, Arctic grayling. 
As anticipated, they spotted a bull moose down by the river, slowly making his way towards camp. Now it's just a matter of calling him in. There's different theories on how often and how much to call, and uh, up here there's a couple of spots where we call where you can get up high and you can watch the bull come to you. And uh, the thing I found, at least in this country, it doesn't seem to work every place you hunt, but in this country, if he's coming to you, you can't call enough. He can almost rip a chainsaw off and he'll come to you, but when they come, they're coming, and the more you call, the uh, the more they respond to it. There ain't nothing like hitting that call and watch them just lock up and just tear a tree up and then come into you, you know. A moose, a moose. Alaska moose can produce trophy sized antlers by the time they are six to seven years old. And by the time they're 10 to 12 years of age, their antlers can reach a spread well into 70 inches and beyond. Although he is a beautiful moose, he's not the giant bull that these hunters were hoping for. And by the looks of it, he's figured out they're not what he was looking for either. Time to go. That ain't the makings of a fish fry. I don't know what is. Fresh grayling. Don't get any better than that. Louisiana fish fry. A little Cajun Choice Creole seasoning. Got some fresh grayling here. We're gonna freaking be Cajun on the tundra for these days. right here. Brought yourself by the awesome time, yeah. Woo, yeah. Well, so far, moose point five and hunter zero. Got about a half a day in on our first day and uh, done some calling this morning. So we still got a lot of hunting to do. Starting to snow a little bit. It's been kind of flurrying all morning long. It's getting a little thicker now. So hopefully it'll all melt off and uh, we'll get a little bit of visibility. Snow's not bad, good cold weather, we like it. Uh, but it can mess up your visibility. So let's just hope it kind of clears up a little bit. Looks like it's gonna. Still had the uh, another load to take back from the river, so we got almost all the gear to the river now. We got one more load to make, and uh, one person, one load, and we'll have everything at the river, and we'll just be hunting from then on. Okay, folks, are we ready for the maiden voyage? We got in. We got all our gear down. We hunted about a day and a half there at uh, at the drop-off point, and. Uh, now we're moving, we, we call our first base camp because it's the first place that, uh, that we actually set up a base camp. And uh, it's not all that far from the drop-off point. We're headed down there now. And uh, a little different this year. So it seems like it's a little colder than it normally is. And uh, I'm looking at it right now, it looks like the water's dropped a couple of inches since this morning. So uh, might be pretty interesting going down river this year. This is going to be interesting. To the left or to the right? Right down in the middle of that V right there. Should you have gone it. like right in there? No, it's even shallower there. 
<laughs> Come on, baby. Pull, for, pull it forward. Just pull it straight ahead. And get ready to jump on it. There you go. Just a little bit more. You're ready to dive on the tube. There you go. Okay. Success. Ain't that amazing how a little bit of water that thing was yep. floating in now? Couple of inches, all it took. Yeah. Okay, watch out, guys. With a mild winter and a lack of precipitation this year, the rivers are much lower than usual, which could make hauling moose a bigger challenge than expected. Home sweet home, baby, just like we left it two years ago. We didn't made it here last year. We shot a moose a lot sooner and uh, had a load on already, so uh, we headed on downriver, but first time in two years. Good to be home. I know one thing, low as that water is, first bull's in the boat. We're rolling as soon as we get one down, because I don't think I want to float two moose. Do you? No, not, not from here. Reality. We're going down the river and float them from there, huh? Well, we got lots of work to do. First order of business, build base camp. We got a new camp set up. We're all ready to roll. So on this hunt, I'm shooting a Browning X-Boat Gold Medallion. It's uh, chambered in a 338 Magnum. It's uh, stainless steel. I put a muzzle brake on it to tame it down a little bit, but it's, uh, it's a sweet shooting little rifle. And uh, got it loaded up with uh, 200 grain uh, Barnes X ammo from my buddy at Steve over at Precise Ammunition. Uh, it's a deadly combination on this big moose. It's the evening hunt day number two. Late in the afternoon, it's about six o'clock. Gets dark about nine, and uh, you know, we'll sit up here in glass till dark and uh, see if we can't catch one moving. I don't know if he's walking this way or not, but he was going across the river. Looked like he was going in that willow patch and we hit that cow call. He stopped and looked at us and turned coming this way. So we'll see how it goes. He's right on that river, right on the edge. He's walking his way around. And uh, hopefully we're going to put him right on that slough right below us. He's about 600 almost 80 yards. We could just pull him out. Got a perfect shot right here at 300 yards. I'm kind of hoping we can pull him across this opening. And, uh, you know, we pulled him about halfway in, so. <laughs> that baby dropped like a stone. Let's get up close and make sure you don't get up. <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, baby, that's a good one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 on this side, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 points total, you know. Four brow ties on each side, you know. Just a really good bull. Got into camp about two o'clock this morning and uh, started snowing. It's a pretty good cover of snow now, which is, you know, good for the moose. And so here we are, we're back in the moose. Uh, got him opened up and uh, it's gonna be a cold, stiff, long piece of work. On average, full grown moose stand almost six feet tall at the shoulders and weigh between 1,200 and 1,600 pounds. Females average between 800 and 1,200 pounds. A large bull moose will dress out at around 950 pounds, yielding approximately 500 pounds of meat. Alaskans and non-residents harvest between 6,000 and 8,000 moose a year, which translates to roughly 3.5 million pounds of usable meat. That's what you call the back strap, buddy. Right in the neck bone. Dropped him like a stone. Probably almost 95, 98% bullet weight retention, which is just what you're looking for, you know. On these big animals, you want your bullet to stay together and you want to take all of that energy and all of that uh, bullet weight and put as much kinetic energy into this guy as you can. And uh, you couldn't ask for better performance than that. Think that's done? Looks pretty good. You want to try it? Yep. Okay. Oh, yummy. It's good. That's really good. And it doesn't need anything. Oh, we got some moose tenderloin here. And uh, we're gonna fry up some bacon and throw in some backstrap and have some fried potatoes on the side. A meal fit for a king. We've got moose heart and we're going to slice it up and fry it up with some garlic and some onions and a little bit of olive oil. Should be really, really good. Had a wolf visit camp last night. You seen that? I did. Fixing to go look at him. So, go check his tracks out. 15 yards from camp, and this wolf walked right up the trail right here and stopped. And uh, must have caught the human scent, but we cooked some moose last night and uh, sat down, and then he turned around and left out of here. But cool to know a wolf walked into camp last night. With the river being as low as it is this year, even a small fallen tree can become a hazardous obstacle. Hang tight, pull it. There you go.
calling during the evening draws bull moose closer to camp and again in the morning to see if any took the bait. The call has worked. A young bull is quickly making his way towards camp. Cool. We're in camp cleaning up and uh, getting ready to float the river tomorrow. And sure enough, I look up, there's a bull. It doesn't appear to be paying any attention to us. Look, he's looking at us now. I'm just going to be quiet and let him walk, see what he does. See how close he comes. Pulled him right into camp, had him straight across the river doing a little stir match from me for what? I don't know, felt like 10 minutes, might have been three, you know? Yeah. We could have shot him, easily could have shot him. You know, no sense in shooting a bull that size on this trip, so we let him go, but it was a lot of fun anyway. Came right in, got right up on the edge of the gravel there. Been an easy, been an easy pack, we could have just dumped him and walked across the river and brought him back to camp, so. That was really cool. That's a good way to start the day there, boy. Moose walking right into camp. He's a little guy, but it's always fun to see him. At the end of the day, just like anything else, you know, you, you put your work and you put your time in and you're successful, but some of us are lucky, but for most of us, we gotta work, we gotta earn it. We gotta work for it. And in this country, uh, if you're not ready to earn it, you're not ready to work for it, then you just as soon stay home.